Hello, Senator. How are you doing? Thank you. You have two minutes. Thank you. Hello, NAACP. It is always fun to follow Bernie Sanders. So let me tell you uh, about me, because uh, you may not know me as well. I am uh, the daughter of the heartland. I grew up in Minnesota. I'm the granddaughter of an iron ore miner uh, who worked 1,500 feet his whole life to send my dad to college. He saved money in a coffee can. My dad became a newspaper man. My mom, she grew up in Milwaukee, and she came to Minnesota, and she taught second grade until she was 70 years old. And I stand before you today as the granddaughter of an iron ore miner, as a daughter of a teacher and a newspaper man, as the first woman elected to the United States Senate from the state of Minnesota, and a candidate for president of the United States. That is what this country is about, that, and something the NAACP has stood up for every single day of its existence. That no matter where you come from, no matter who you are, no matter the color of your skin, no matter where you worship, no matter who you love, that you should be able to succeed in the United States of America. That is what you stand for. And today, when we are seeing an unprecedented hearing in Washington, you may have seen me in the Kavanaugh hearing when I fought for justice. Today, as we are seeing another hearing, we are reminded of something you have always stood for, and Donald Trump better be listening, that in America, as someone once said, the law is the king. The king is not the law. So it is time for Donald Trump to stop the racism, to leave the White House, and we must have change in America, and I stand for economic opportunity. I stand for voting rights, something I have fought for dearly, and I stand for a better America for all of us. Thank you for having me. Okay, it's time for questions, Senator Klobuchar. What is your black agenda? Okay, so first of all, she asked what my black agenda is. First of all, I think we're not gonna have a black agenda if we don't allow black people to vote, all right? Uh, when you think about what just happened uh, in Georgia this last election, where the Secretary of State, who was running for governor, withheld 58,000 voter registrations because they didn't have hyphens. If you wouldn't have been allowed to do that, Stacey Abrams would be governor of Georgia right now. So my agenda is to reauthorize the Voting Rights Act. It is make sure um, I actually carry the bill that Senator Sanders just mentioned to allow every single person in this country to register to vote when they turn 18 years old. Uh, and I would make sure we stop the voter suppression. The second part of it is economic opportunity. Uh, it's a simple idea uh, that we know what's happened in this country, uh, that there are not equal resources, that when we look at our public schools, April, uh, we see a situation. My daughter was for years in a school that was nearly 90% free and reduced lunch. And I saw what happened to those kids in that school because they would come and they would be hungry. They'd be getting into the vending machines to try to get food to go home. We have a president right now that just yesterday tried to cut, as you know, food stamps. He announces that after giving trillions of dollars with the big weight of which is for the wealthy people. So my agenda is to make sure that we are investing in kids from early childhood on, investing in our public schools, making college much more affordable, and making sure that people can retire, which really hits the African American community hard. So you just brought up the issue of food stamps. Whenever there is anything to be cut, it's always going for something, those subsidies for low-income Americans. Yep. Would you guarantee that that would not happen if you were President of the United States? Yes. <laughs> Explain. Uh, well, I have been on the Agriculture Committee since I got to the Senate. Uh, I have a state that has a major metropolitan area. And food and stamps also come through rural. agriculture. And they come through oh. agriculture. So I have a lot of experience. I've worked on a number of these farm bills and have stood up for that. You're not going to be able to have kids do well in school if they don't get good nutrition. And they're not going to be able to succeed uh, if they're not able to learn. Well, you've been criticized for not having top-tier staff that reflects the diversity of America. Is it a fair criticism and explain why or why not? Of my, the diversity of my staff? Yes. Oh, well, Talk to your staff. Okay. Well, we have, first of all, um, our staff actually, the diversity numbers are way above what my state is, and I've worked really hard on that. 
Um, I go back to when I was county attorney. I was looking, I think, four of the people uh, that were some of my top people are now judges. I worked to promote them. I worked with them, recommended them for judges. Um, my state director went on to be the, as African American, the city attorney in St. Paul, Minnesota. So I am proud of our record of diversity. And I think that you can't have a president that doesn't understand that their cabinet and their leadership and the judges they appoint uh, must reflect the community and include a uh, major African American leadership. You did not want direct payment for reparations. With that said, I'm going back to General Sherman's promise of 40 acres and a mule. Then President Abraham Lincoln supported it, but it was a promise that wasn't kept. Understanding that, what do you believe should happen? Mm -hmm. Well, I am on Senator Booker and Sheila Jackson's leave bill, uh, which I think is a very important bill um, and has to be a priority for our country. A study for the commission. the commission for reparations. <clears throat> and as you know, that's a major bill out there. From there, I think you look at the recommendations from the commission and decide what to do. I think one of the most interesting things out there is what Representative Clyburn has been doing, which has been investing in impoverished and underserved communities mm -hmm. um, and looking at that in a broader way. And that's another way you could ramp that up uh, beyond what he has done. What is the importance of an HBCU to you, and what would you do as president to ensure its longevity and its viability? I didn't hear the first one. What is the importance of an HBCU, a historically black colleges? No, I know. I yeah. just didn't hear you. Okay. So um, I think that historically black colleges, um, and I was able to uh, visit at FIST just recently, historically black colleges are um, centerpiece of African American education in this country and we must keep them funded. I've met with their leadership numerous times. We must keep them strong. And I think it gets to the bigger issue um, of college in this country. Um, and that is that it has become harder and harder uh, for people to be able to go to college. That's why I support making sure the money goes um, where the money should be. And that is with the people that need it the most. I favor doubling the Pell Grants, I favor increasing the eligibility for those Pell Grants, making community college uh, free, um, and then making it easier for people to pay back their loans. On issues of policing, I want to bring up a recent case, Eric Garner. What are your thoughts about what happened? Should the police officer have been charged in that case, in that choking death? That is for the justice system to decide, and I know it went through a number of attorney generals, but I thought that what happened there if you could just answer, let me answer. I thought it was uh, an outrageous situation. I watched that video and it just tears your heart out to see what happened. I think in a broader sense that we have to make a decision on how we're gonna deal with a criminal justice system uh, that is, um, has very strong problems with racism. We have to admit that this criminal justice system is racist and go from there. What do I think we need to do? Number one, make sure body cameras are the law. Uh, number two, have a diverse police force. Number three, don't just rely on investigations to be done uh, by internal prosecutors in the office that handles the case, that people should be looking at the cases. Police investigations should come from the outside. Uh, number four, again, don't always use the grand jury system. Make the prosecutor make the decisions herself. Senator Klobuchar, what is the biggest misconception about you that people should take, take in, or what do you want to sure. do? Um, I think the biggest misconception of me may be because I'm someone that gets things done in Washington. I've passed over 100 bills where I've been the lead Democrat, that that somehow means uh, that you're not bold enough. Um, and I think my ideas are bold. Uh, for decades, we've tried to take on the pharmaceutical companies to bring down the cost of prescription drugs and that has failed. Uh, we have tried to do things when it comes to making affordable college, it's failed. I think we need someone's bold that is gonna continue on this march, work side by side with the NAACP. You are the welders that have shortened that arc of justice, and that what is what we must do to beat Donald Trump. And time to close. Okay, thank you. Well, I wanna thank all of you, and I start uh, with what happened the day of that inauguration, that dark day and you look at what happened the next day, millions of people marched across this country, right? They didn't just put their blanket over their heads and say what went wrong, they marched. Then you go to the next day when 6,000 women 
signed up to run for office. This is the march that we are on. And then you go to day 10, where at that uh, airports all over the country, after the president put out that mean-spirited Muslim ban, right, what happened? People spontaneously showed up at airports all across this country, and they marched and they objected. You go through to the summer when they tried to repeal Obamacare, right? Tried to take away people's rights to protect themselves from getting thrown off their insurance for pre-existing conditions. What happened? The Democrats united. We were joined by three Republicans, and we won. That is because we are on a march to justice. You go into that fall when we elected people in races in Virginia and New Jersey, uh, when in the state of Alabama, where no one ever thought it possible, in a victory against racism, we stood up for dignity, and Doug Jones won that seat in the Senate in the state of Alabama. That's what happened because of all of you. You go and see those kids marching after Parkland. They didn't just march, they voted, which brings us to the midterm, where we elected the most diverse group of candidates we have ever had, literally 50 years after the first African-American woman was elected to Congress, we elected 20 to the House of Representatives. You did that, and that is the march that we were on that is gonna take us to 2020. Thank you very much for having me today. Thank you for your good work. Thank you. Thank you so much, Senator. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. Senator Amy Klobuchar.